And talking about the life of uh, Imam Ibn Kathir, the author of the famous book of Tafsir, Tafsir Ibn Kathir. His full name was actually Ismail Ibn Umar Ibn Kathir Ibn Daw Ibn Kathir. He was given a nickname okay, by scholars and they called him Imad al-Din or the, the pillar of the religion because of his immense contribution to Islam and his kunya was Abu al-Fada. And Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he was born a city in Sham in the year 700 Hijra, and this city is known as Busra. The state of the Muslims at the time was such that they were in a period of instability to a certain extent because you had the Mongols on one side who were attacking and also you had the, the Romans who were on the other side. And the period, this specific period, you had the Mamluk dynasty. And his family, they were known to be a family of scholars. So his family were known to be a religious, righteous, pious family. His, his father was a scholar in his own right. His, he was known to be a faqih. He was known to be a poet. And also he was a khatib in Busra itself. When he was three years old, his father actually passed away. And he himself talks about this. He said, when my father passed away, I was around three years old. And it feels like, it feels like a dream. And I barely remember some things about my father. So his father passed away. So who basically looked after him? Uh, his brother was the one who raised him after this and looked after him and took care of him. He was a scholar, he was a faqih, uh, he was someone who was a teacher, he was a khatib. So his brother was the one who basically raised him and also he's the one who was the first educator. He was his first teacher. He taught him from a young age, ever since his, his father passed away at the age of three. And at the age of seven, he traveled with him to Damascus. And his brother was his teacher and remained his teacher for a very long period of time. And he continued to learn from him until he died in the year 750 Hijri. When Ibn Kathir himself is 50 years old. And his brother maybe about 70, around that age maybe. So it shows us how much uh, he learned from him and how much he benefited from him and how much he studied from him. He started to memorize the Qur'an at the age of 6 years old. And he completed the memorization of the Qur'an by the age of 11. When we talk about Ibn Kathir, we generally think of him to be the Mufassir. He was also a historian because of his famous book, uh, Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya. Also, he was a scholar of fiqh, Islamic jurisprudence. He followed the Shafi'i Madhab, and he memorized Shafi'i fiqh called At-Tambih. So he was someone who had memorized uh, texts in, in, in different sciences. He had memorized the Quran, he had memorized texts in fiqh, and also he had memorized texts in usul, usul al-fiqh, the principles of fiqh, and also in hadith. And they mentioned that he was also a scholar of hadith, not just a scholar of the Qur'an specifically. And as we mentioned, he studied history as well. And also he studied Arabic grammar. So all of these things he studied, basically showing us how wide-ranged he was. And he studied under a famous scholar who was in Damascus, a scholar of hadith by the name of Al-Hafiz Al-Hafiz al, al, al mizzi and he was so close to him, and he learned so much from him, benefited so much from him. And al hafiz al-Mizi was so impressed by him that he married him to his own daughter. And his daughter's name was Zainab. His mother-in-law was someone by the name of Aisha. And what's interesting is both of these people, they were both Hufad of the Qur'an. And he had children also from this marriage. He had a child by the name of Umar, and also Abdul Rahman, and Muhammad, and Abdul Wahab and Ahmed. And as we mentioned, he also studied with uh, Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. So Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah came to Damascus in the year 712 and he stayed there until his death in 728 Hijri. And this is where Ismail Ibn Kathir became one of his main students. And that's why the scholars say that to the extent that when Ibn Taymiyyah would be be imprisoned because of some of his some of his views and because of the oppression of the leaders at the time, Ibn Kathir would also suffer because of his closeness with Ibn Taymiyyah. He studied fiqh from Ibn Taymiyyah, even though Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah was someone who was a student of the Hanbali fiqh. 
he studied, as we mentioned, with his father-in-law, Al-Hafidh Al-Mizzi. His father wrote a book in Hadith, a famous book of the narrators of Hadith, known as Tahdeeb Al-Kamal. Uh, also, Ibn, uh, Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he studied with Imam Al-Zahabi, who uh, wrote uh, um, numerous books. One of the famous books is the book on history, Sir Alam al Lives of the, of the Noble People uh, of, of, of the World. So we can see Imam Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he studied with all of these scholars. It said that there was a time when the, the leader at the time ordered that there would be a class taking place in the main masjid in Damascus, which was known as uh, Al-Jami'at Al-Umawi. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, was basically given permission it was like an official asked by the king at the time. And so he was given permission to, to teach his tafsir. And so he wrote his tafsir, and his tafsir was very popular even before he had uh, passed away. And they say, people mention that judges and scholars and significant individuals, famous scholars, would actually go to his class. On the first day when he taught, they went and they basically listened and benefited and learned from Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah which shows us and they say there was a large number of people large number of people gathered and they attended the first class he did where, where, where he taught tafsir of Surah Fatiha and the leader at the time he awarded all of those who attended with a stipend he gave them money as like a gift in the year 763 Hijra there's an incident which is mentioned where the scholars wanted to test his knowledge with regards to the Arabic language. So many of the scholars, they gathered together in a specific place. So each of them, they took one of the volumes of this book. So each of the scholars would basically mention a passage in the book and he would complete the passage for them. Which again shows us his strength with regards to his, to his Arabic language and you know how, how well versed he was uh, in, in, in Nahu and in the sciences of the Arabic language. Also it's mentioned that at the time there was an incident when some of the people who are from the Ahlul Dhimma were attacked. Those non-Muslims who are under the protection of the Muslims, living under Muslim rule. He basically defended the Ahlul Dhimma because their wealth and things like this were being threatened and they were going to be taken. And so this shows us how he always stood up for, for justice. Also, it's mentioned that there was an opponent of Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah from the scholars. His name was as -Subki. An incident took place where as -Subki ended up being falsely accused himself. So he himself became falsely accused of taking the wealth of the orphan. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah basically stood up and defended Imam as -Subki even though he was an opponent of his main teacher, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. And eventually, Imam al-Subki was basically, he was found to be innocent of these accusations which were thrown at him. And again, this shows you his justice, that even though there was someone who was an opponent to his teacher, at the end of the day, justice had to, has to prevail. Other scholars at the time were also uh, the students of Ibn Taymiyyah who supported him and were also, uh, they went through hardships because of this. Imam al-Zahabi rahimahullah and also Ibn al-Qayyim, the famous uh, student of Ibn Taymiyyah rahimah, rahimahumullah. Uh, these students were also supportive of Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. And the students of Ibn Kathir rahimahullah is a student by the name of Al-Jazari. And Al-Jazari uh, was an expert on the Quran itself. So he wrote many books on the sciences of the Quran and he wrote a, a book on uh, Qiraat, which was known as uh, Al-Nashr fi Qiraat al-Ashr. So talking about the different qiraat and modes of recitation uh, of the, uh, in Islam of the Qur'an specifically, Al-Jazari, one of the students of Ibn Kathir rahimahullah. Also from his, from his students was someone by the name of Al-Zarkashi, was uh, someone who specialized in Usul al-Fiqh. And he wrote a book in Usul known as Al-Bahr al-Muhit. And again, all these things show us the knowledge of Ibn Kathir rahimahullah. The fact that he had students from different sciences and he was able to teach students uh, with regards to specific sciences. So this was Ibn Kathir rahimahullah and Ibn Kathir himself, he wrote many books. Uh, they say approximately 20 books he wrote. From the most famous of them is Tafsir al-Quran al-Azim, otherwise known as Tafsir Ibn Kathir. And also he wrote Qasas al-Anbiya, Stories of the Prophets. And many of these have been translated. Uh, Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya, the famous book on history, the beginning and the end, starting from the, the, the time when Adam was created all the way up to his time and then 
the day of judgment, signs of the day of judgment, and day of judgment itself. So it's a book called From the Beginning to the End. Uh, also, he wrote a book called Alamat uh, al or Signs of the Day of Judgment. Uh, he wrote a book on the virtues of the Quran. He wrote a book on Sirah of the Messenger of Allah. He wrote a book on the life of Isa, uh, the life of Khalid ibn Walid. He wrote a book on Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Rahimahullah. So he wrote many books on different uh, sciences, on different topics, on different subjects. He also wrote books in hadith. He wrote a book on the Musnad of uh, Umar radiallahu an. So all the hadith narrated by Umar radiallahu an. Ibn Kathir plays a pivotal role in tafsir because one of the most famous books of tafsir is tafsir ibn Kathir. And this book, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed this book. Ibn Kathir himself we know that he was someone who put a lot of emphasis on the sciences of the Quran. And tafsir is one of those subjects, it's the most important subject. And it covers everything. Because it covers the Quran itself. And the Quran itself covers multiple sciences. And when we talk about tafsir itself, there's a, a number of ways in which tafsir are basically uh, written or are taught. So you have tafsir which is based on transmission. And this type of tafsir is when you basically teach tafsir and you, you explain ayat with other ayat. And you explain ayat, if not by the Quran, then by a hadith. Or explaining ayat of the Quran with the sayings of the companions. Or explaining ayat of the, of the Quran with the sayings of the tabi'een. So when you read Ibn Kathir, okay, you'll see that this is normally generally how he explains ayat. So he'll mention other ayat which explain that ayat which he's doing the tafsir of. And then he'll mention a hadith. And then he'll mention the sayings of the companions, sayings of the tabi'een. That's why you'll find many times he'll mention sayings of the tabi'een. With regards to Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, and his tafsir, how did he write his tafsir? What method did he use? Why is his book so successful? Why is his book so popular? He was known as Mufassirun Naqal. And Naqal means someone who is an expert of transmission. So whenever he would mention something in his tafsir, they were things which were an, an eye for detail. And he had a very, very accurate memory. So things which he would write, he would have heard them and he would have recorded them exactly how he heard them. So because of his accuracy, and this is one of the reasons why his book is so successful, why his book is so popular. And also, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, because of his intention. So it shows us the importance of sincerity itself. Also, on top of this, he would also mention fiqhi issues. For example, ayat referring to wudu or referring to salah. Also, linguistic benefits he would also mention. And, you know, morphology and poetry he would also mention in some ayat of the Quran. So this all shows us how it's something which his tafsir covers a little bit of everything. And the English book we have, it's not a complete Tafsir ibn Kathir. It's the abridged format. And towards the end of his life, he basically lost his eyesight. In the year 768 Hijra, he started to lose his eyesight until he lost it completely. And they say the reason for this, first of all, was because of the excessive reading and writing that he would do. And they say he was fully healthy until he died. He died on a Thursday, in the month of Sha'ban in the year 774 Hijrah. And this is the life of Ibn Kathir, Rahimahullah.